Yes. Mr. President, my fellow students, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure and privilege for me to be back with you in Kosovo and to share some of my lessons learned and experiences as a former commander K4. Uh, when I came to this country for the first time, which was in the middle of June 1999, I immediately fell in love with it because of two reasons. One is a fantastic landscape and as a guy coming from the mountains, grew up in Garmisch Partenkirche and I just felt at home. But more important, I think, than the landscape were the people. Very amiable people, open, interested, sometimes aggressive. People who were of a very special kind for me and we were eager to help. And not only the Kosovo Albanians, but also the Serbs. And everybody told me, you're not supposed to go to the northern part of Mitrovica because it's so dangerous. And I was very often there without any uh, close protection. And you see here, this was a picture of one of my first visits when I was suddenly surrounded by Serb students and they said, why don't you play basketball with us? So a very friendly and nice atmosphere. And the question was for us as K4, what can, can we do to create a situation for those youngsters who are 10 years old and who might be 20 years by today or 15, depending how large they were by that time, how old they were by that time, to improve on the long run their conditions for daily living and to get them back into normalcy. By the time I arrived here, the war was over. The Serbs had withdrawn their forces. They left some ugly remnants here. There were many thousand people killed during the war and many people unaccounted in mass graves. And I tell you, when we dug up these mass graves in the vicinity of Arau, watch this was terrible. And I personally did not sleep very good for a long time. Uh, if we remember, uh, some 800,000 people were basically pushed out of the country and up into the mountains, into those ugly camps in Macedonia and in camps in Kukish. And the question was what to do about them once they come back and their houses and their villages have been destroyed. If you look at these houses here, they are all ruins. Some houses have blue plastic which we started as a first kind of a roof for the winter but imagine what it happened once you have been three four five weeks a month in those very very ugly camps and hoping for getting back into your house when this is your house when everything is rubble you can imagine that the trauma was very, very deep and it's very easy for me as an outsider saying the war is over, now you have to sit together and be nice to each other. Every family was affected and people just didn't want to be very friendly to the others. The Albanians want to take revenge and the others were not very happy either. And uh, patrimonial sites have been destroyed on either side to a large extent property has been destroyed and people were very very aggressive and ladies and gentlemen my first impression mid of june was total anarchy and chaos no schools no university no hospitals no shops only black market thousands of cars unregistered and stolen we had a big sign at the airport of Mitrovica, of, of uh, Pristina, saying, Welcome to Kosovo, your car is already here. <laughs> and my deputy, an Italian two star, was always going, saying, I will find my car which was stolen in Italy. It must be here someplace. He never found it. But the situation which I described led to the United Nations Security Council coming up with the res resolution 1244 which was the basis for NATO to deploy uh, early June into that country. And they deployed not to wage a war, not to start a war again. 
This was a very clear dictum by NATO. Our mission as K4 was to provide for a safe and secure environment so that the non-military stakeholders, the NGOs, the IOs, all these civil organizations can work in an environment unmolested in order to improve the situation for the local population. This was the key question, to help the people and to get these refugees in the better world, to support the infrastructure as much as possible, rebuild the road and network system. I think the first bridge which we, bought, which we built was built by the Gurkhas, the British Gurkhas in Malosh, Milo, Malosh, Milosh, 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 uh, we helped the locals to build roofs over the remnants of their houses and we hoped that we could prevent a major outbreak of demonstration of violence. The biggest demonstration was on the 13th of February where some 40,000 uh, Kosovars marched to Mitrovica to demonstrate for the United Mitrovica. And this was a picture taken out of the helicopter. All the roads were totally blocked. It was terrible. And we had to separate the Serbs in the north and the Albanians in the south and our soldiers were in between. So the idea was to basically have a network of checkpoints all over the country to look for weapon systems, to provide security by being in the villages, the patrols, and showing the people that we care for them. But on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, this was also very important. To show the local population that we are there to defend them and to show the Serb side that we are willing to take all our assets which we had on the ground and in the air to fight for Kosovo in case it should be attacked by the Serb forces again. So this was a double approach which we showed in when I was given the mission to take over, I was command of Lansing and headquarters which was stationed in the beautiful city of Heidelberg, some 13 different nations who were willing to join us. My boss, my immediate boss was General Wesley Clark, the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, a great friend. And I show you this view graph because it's a kind of strange we were given the mission to deploy into Kosovo by NATO on the 16th of August with the mission to start taking over responsibility on uh, the 13th of September, not even a month. Until that time we were not allowed to talk about this mission, but we started very early when I came back for, for, for the first time from the reconnaissance to play, plan our deployment, to do our uh, our national training in our staff to do the headquarter internal staff training and a very very deep reconnaissance and liaison in order to know what we were up to here. We changed our headquarters as a land center headquarters and a K4 headquarters. We did a very detailed key leader training trying to find out what were the most important things we had to take care of and how would we react on different uh, vignettes which we tried to play forward and then early September we started to deploy our forces and they were together with the forces of the Ark of General Jackson for a week to take over from them in the, in the right sea training on the, on the 8th of October we took over. I had some 50,000 soldiers of uh, 39 different nations and we had a handicap right from the beginning and I told tell you this because this did not apply to you, but very much to us. We have taken over a tent camp, which was nice for the summer, but we had to prepare for the winter. And as you know, the winter in Kosovo is very cold. So this was my tent, my deputy sleeping here, not very sexy. No running water, no electricity. And the winter came very, very early. And the major problem for us was mud, 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 up to the ankles. 
and no containers. The containers were brought in in January, and from January on we could basically expand from Film City. And if you look here at this large tent, this, uh, there were 78 staff officers, colonels and lieutenant colonels, stacked up by th in three beds to work there for a half year, and everybody knew at a short period of time who was snoring in major or minor. We ran into the same problems as the local population, i.e. Kosovo, in Obelich, Kosovo Alpha and Kosovo Bravo were not working. At least one stack if it was good. And if you came out of your tent in the morning, you sniffed around and you, you, you sniffed the smell of the coal, you said, okay, today at least one stack is working. The, the biggest device which has not been destroyed during the air war were Kosovo Alpha and Bravo. Unfortunately, they were not destroyed because I think otherwise in the meantime, we would have a very modern system. But this was terrible, not only for us, but also for the population because together with electricity, we have a pumping system for the water system. And you just had it for hours. And we could not announce it in, in, in advance. And the other big thing was Mitrovica, the old battery factory, which was totally polluted, which we did not realize at the beginning. We moved our Danish contingent into the factory, and we realized suddenly that they all became sick. They started to vomit constantly, and we basically then looked what happened. And we saw cyanide and arsenic dropping into the ground. We basically checked the water and it had a content of, of uh, uh, quicksilver, which was 262 times higher than the World Health Agency uh, was allowing. So we had to move our forces out and we got some specialists from Italy who basically got about three trains full of wagon, full of poison out of that area. We had no command and control system, you cannot imagine that this happens, but my land force command and control system is still today in Sarajevo. We were the first headquarters to deploy to Sarajevo and we left all our equipment. So what we had was a British brigade, a British signal brigade, but you can imagine that the British commander wanted to have a signal brigade back as soon as possible because otherwise he could not work appropriately. So we had to build up from scratch a network, a strategic network, uh, which we did by buying off the economy, off the shelf, and by also establishing a normal telephone system, because by that time there was no telephone system whatsoever working in Kosovo anymore. And we didn't have to work it, build it up only for us, but also for all the civilians in UMIC, for the IOs and NGOs, and as far as possible and necessary for the civilian administration here as well. My key counterpart at the beginning 